Success is often the best revenge and ultimate resistance to trauma. Hi, I'm Diva Talk, and today we'll be looking at the soaring phoenix of entertainment, Tina Turner. While discussing the making of her biopic in the 1990s, Tina reflected on her years, stating it wasn't a good life. The good didn't outweigh the bad. Born Anime Bullock in 1939, much of her life was defined by harrowing upheaval. She was born into a violent home. Her father often beat her mother. In fact, her mother, Zelma, was already planning on leaving before Tina was born. She didn't want another child, and Tina would later confess she fought a losing battle for her mother's love. Both parents abandoned her when she was a child, and Tina and her older siblings moved in with her grandmother. She both loved and hated her mother, yearning for her to return, yet hating Zelma for deserting her. In her teens, Tina met the already successful Ike Turner at a club, surprising him one night with her gravelly cavernous and powerful voice. He would invite women up on the stage as part of his act and upon hearing Tina, he saw her gift. Ike changed her name from anime to Tina Turner and they became the Ike and Tina Turner Review. Although they had some chart success, it was their live performances that defined their enormous talent. The act was in direct opposition with the refined polished look of Motown. This was a raw, barely contained sexual energy. Her voice sounded more like Little Richard than a typical female diva. They were set apart from their contemporaries. However, behind the cohesive solidarity of the live band was a brutal, horrendous marriage. Tina stated she lived a life of death, merely existing to survive the daily torture of Ike. He frequently abused her beat her with a shoe stretcher when she was pregnant, often beat her with a wire hanger and then made her go out on stage while in excruciating pain. They would often play four shows a night. Tina eventually required reconstructive surgery on her nose due to the violence. She was coerced, brainwashed into staying, caught up between the fear of Ike and the guilt of leaving a band that depended on her to pay the bills. Tina's son said once that everyone was happy around her, yet she was always sad. She had a non-existent life beyond the studio and the house. After their single Proud Mary became a hit, Ike's drug use escalated and as a result, so did the violence. Tina was subjected to stranglings, third degree burns, rape. Eventually, she attempted suicide, taking an entire bottle of sleeping pills and her stomach was pumped. She barely survived. It was Buddhism and its daily meditations that eventually gave Tina the courage to leave. One day while traveling to Dallas, Ike hit Tina in the back of the car and Tina fought back. They both savagely hit each other. Tina's face badly swollen, her white clothes covered in blood. On arriving to the Dallas Hilton, Ike fell asleep and Tina ran. She ran with nothing but a small bag and 36 cents to her name. She ran for her life. She ran across the freeway and into the Ramada Inn. After 16 years with Ike, she was free. The date this occurred was incredibly symbolic. The 3rd of July, one day before Independence Day. The public holiday almost mirrored the private achievement that resided within Tina's soul and yet the battle to survive had only just begun. Even after the marriage ended, Ike and Tina owed millions to concert venues due to planned gigs that were cancelled. And due to contracts geared towards Ike, Tina, after the divorce, was left with nothing. She even had to fight to keep her name. And ultimately, that's all she acquired, her name. And although Tina was successful in keeping her stage title, her solo career was in free fall. She released two solo albums in the late 70s, both flopping. The public viewed her as a middle-aged relic of the 60s and early 70s who was obviously talented, but no longer relevant. Labels struggled to find a sound, shifting from disco to cabaret. She struggled to attain her own image, her own identity, and she began to be reduced to a dated Vegas act. And then came Roger Davies. On the set of Olivia Newton-John's TV special, Tina was introduced to the manager Roger Davies. T 
Tina, now without a record deal, was determined, telling Roger she wanted to be the first black female rock star to pack stadiums. Davies helped Tina to alter her image. The bob, Mackie dresses were replaced by miniskirts. The long hair of the Ike years was cut, an almost symbolic act. However, labels were reluctant to accept a middle-aged black woman singing rock music, denying the black origins of the genre. Turner relocated to the UK, where support for her comeback was larger, and in 1983, she released a cover of Al Green's Let's Stay Together, which charted at number six in the UK, her first solo hit that proved to the reluctant labels that Tina was capable of a legitimate solo career. Six months later, one of the greatest comebacks in music history was released. What's Love Got To Do With It presented a confident Tina. This was not your typical love song from a wide-eyed, naive pop star, nor was it a veteran performer attempting to appear cool and youthful. No, this sounded like the mature musings of someone who had been around the block. Turner had updated her image, but she wasn't trying to be young. Compare that with other stars who appear like a walking midlife crisis in order to climb the charts again. The single went to number one, and Tina became the oldest woman at that time to peak on the US charts. In her early 40s, Tina successfully competed with fresh-faced youth of MTV and her triumphant comeback enshrined her within the hearts of the public. Private Dancer would eventually sell over 20 million records and earned four Grammy Awards, including Record of the Year. Tina launched an enormous 180-date world tour to support the record. Critic Camille Paglia praised Tina's mature sexuality, noting Private Dancer was released during the puritanical height of the feminist anti-sex crusade, noting the album daringly invoked prostitution in its title, while viewing What's Love as making a feminist statement, as Turner embraced a radical freedom of sexual choice, being described as an Amazonian superwoman of all seasons. Turner's impact on pop culture continued with Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, performing the Golden Globe nominated hit song and starring in the film. Her follow-up album earned another hit single, another Grammy, and it was supported by the biggest tour by attendance for a female artist ever, playing to over 4 million people and included a record-breaking concert in Rio that saw the largest paying audience for a concert ever at 180,000 people. And the tour led to a live album, which in turn won its own Grammy. At this stage, Tina had risen beyond even the fame of the Ike years, becoming an icon and a live performer belonged to a class reserved for very few, a benchmark by which excellence is judged. And yet, simultaneously, Tina revealed her vulnerable side. In 1986, she released her book, I, Tina, detailing Ike's abuse and helping to break the silence of a generation who suppressed domestic violence. Tina moved between worlds, the wonder woman of rock and the candid survivor who was not defined by her struggles. Tina continued to rule the touring world until 2000, entering retirement and being inducted into the Guinness World Record for selling more concert tickets than any other solo artist in history. In 2008, as the Grammy celebrated its 50th year, Tina also celebrated her half century in the industry cementing the milestone with one final tour. She played her last show in 2009 in Sheffield, England, months shy of her 70th birthday. It was a tour de force remarkable performance in direct opposition with her age, presenting a woman that existed independent of age, an otherworldly goddess of music unchecked by time. And as a result, Tina has become a woman unshackled by abuse ageism or the warped politics of record labels. She's become more than a rock star. She's developed into a myth of rebellion, triumph and resurgence. And as a result, it's not surprising why she is so loved and why success truly is the best revenge an ultimate resistance to trauma. And for this and so much more, I salute the queen of rock and roll, Miss Tina Turner. Thanks for watching.